It should come as no surprise whatsoever that I am not exactly frightened of so-called creepy crawlies. Sure, big centipedes are definitely something that can make my palms sweat a little when it's time to do a rehouse, but aside from that, everything else is pretty chill. Even the notorious funnel webs, a source of terror and myths that far transcend the borders of Australia and have even discouraged some would-be tourists from visiting the country, are little more than comedy relief on this channel. But there is yet one creepy crawly in Australia that still holds the ability to make me nervous, and it wasn't until my adventures at Karanda that I came face to face with this impressive and perhaps unlikely predator. In the wet tropics of North Queensland, the seemingly endless stretches of impenetrably thick, luxuriant vegetation hide many secrets. In the daylight hours, the forest holds them firmly to itself, sparing us only the faintest glimpses, mere tantalising hints of the kaleidoscopic biodiversity it harbours. But as the day grows old and the shadows lengthen, a marvellous array of animals, weird and wonderful, begins to venture forth. Huntsman spiders, some small and spindly, others almost as big as your hand, sit motionless in anticipation for their next meal, their long hairy legs splayed out, primed to detect the slightest of vibrations. Centipedes of all kinds, from lightweight, delicate scutigeromorphs like this Theruopoda longicornis, to voracious powerhouses like Ethmostigmus rubripes, are also on the prowl, sometimes surging through the leaf litter, other times waiting in ambush. Both of these groups are animals with which I am very well acquainted, but there was another nighttime hunter, one that I had long been vaguely aware of yet hitherto never seen. That was an entirely different matter. Meet the revenge fantasy of the feeder crickets, Chorleo Grylacris, the bulldog raspy cricket. Chorleo Grylacris, unlike spiders and centipedes, is an insect, more specifically a member of the order Orthoptera. The Orthopterans are a wildly diverse group of animals and out of the entire nighttime ensemble, were perhaps the only ones that felt like a constant presence. Not only were the animals themselves sitting atop seemingly every leaf, frond and branch, but their calls along with those of frogs made for an ethereal chorus that persisted unbroken for the entirety of the night. A natural symphony generated by the mingled sounds of endless species, as though the rainforest had grown so weary from hiding its secrets through the day that they burst forth upon nightfall in the form of a thousand interwoven melodies. Orthopterans include crickets, katydids, grasshoppers and an assortment of their lesser known relatives, and one need not venture to North Queensland's tropical rainforests to behold a taste of their astonishing variety. In the comparatively mundane environments of our suburbs and gardens, many species can still be found, including one of Australia's largest, the giant grasshopper Valanga irregularis. The order Orthoptera is split into two suborders, the Coelifera, which includes grasshoppers, and the Ansifera, which contains crickets and katydids among others. These two groups may be distinguished on the basis of their antennae, which tend to be short and stiff in the former, but long and filamentous in the latter. Furthermore, adult females of the Ansifera have a sword or needle-shaped ovipositor, used to deposit eggs into a suitable substrate. The ovipositor is often quite prominent, and can in some species be longer than the animal's body. It is from this feature that the suborder gets its name, for Ansifera translates to mean sword bearer. The Ansifera are rather more varied in terms of diet than the herbivorous Coelifera. While a large number feed predominantly on vegetation, many are predatory to varying extents, and among their number are some of the most ferocious hunters that the insect class has to offer. 
Cholio Grylacris belongs to a family within the Ensifera called the Grylacridae, which are colloquially referred to as raspy crickets or leaf-rolling crickets. The latter name stems from the common tendency for many members of the family to shelter in rolled-up leaves. Held in position by silk secreted from their mouthparts, a feature unique to the Grylacridae. But while the leaf-rolling part of their common name is apt, the same cannot be said for the cricket part. Cricket is a word that has multiple meanings. It can refer to an insect that is exceptionally good at keeping people awake, or a sport that has the exact opposite effect. But the real complication comes from the fact that many insects with cricket in their common name aren't actually crickets. Crickets are generally agreed to form a superfamily called the Gryloidea. Raspy crickets, meanwhile, belong to the Stenopelmatoidea, a superfamily that also includes the Anostostomatidae, known in New Zealand as Weta, hope I'm pronouncing that right, and in many other localities as king crickets, of course, not actually crickets. As well as the Stenopelmatidae, the most well-known members of which include Stenopelmatis, the Jerusalem cricket, not actually a cricket, and Sire Ferox, the Indonesian giant cricket, also not a cricket. Sire Ferox sometimes also shares the epithet bulldog raspy cricket with Chorleo grylacris, even though it's not a raspy cricket and neither it nor raspy crickets are crickets. Was that confusing? Well, it was meant to be. Hopefully that bonanza of befuddlement will provide some perspective for the people who ask me to use common names instead of scientific names because they're hard to understand. There are approximately 600 known species of Grylacridid, ranging almost worldwide, particularly in tropical and subtropical regions. And when it comes to Australian Grylacridids, few or possibly none exceed Chorleo Grylacris in size and ferocity. In fact, a recently published study suggests these crickets, not actually crickets on steroids, are armed with one of the most powerful bites of any insect. Out of approximately 650 insect species examined from several different continents, Chorleo grylacris topped the list for bite force, and looking at their huge mandibles it's hardly a matter of surprise. While these insects may lack any sort of venom, their bites, through sheer mechanical damage alone, are every bit as lethal for a small animal unfortunate enough to find itself on the receiving end. A couple quick nibbles are often more than sufficient to ensure anything Chorleo grylacris pounces on won't be getting up again. And nor are these deadly mandibles the only weapon in this predator's arsenal. Its front four legs, like those of many predatory orthopterans, are adorned with grappling spines, and when the insect seizes a prey item, they make for a very effective restraint, holding the hapless victim in place while the mandibles inflict crippling damage. Though these animals are highly predatory, they do feed on plant matter as well, particularly fruits and nuts, and their mandibles are every bit as suited for grinding through tough seeds as they are for turning other insects into yesterday's news. But what about constructing a sturdy home within which Chorleo grylacris can safely shelter during the day? Well, fear not, for the humble mandible is a tool suited for all trades. Man, I sound like I'm getting paid to advertise raspy cricket mandibles. Sponsored by Bunnings for Insects, free snag with every mandible purchase. Okay, but seriously. A 2018 study states that Chorleo grylacris predominantly resides in burrows gnawed into the stumps left behind by broken branches, and sharp mouthparts augmented by a powerful bite force would doubtless be very effective at turning a wound on a tree trunk into a viable home. Though I never got the chance to see one of their home sites myself while I was at Karanda, I encountered in the space of a few short nighttime expeditions dozens of these huge insects out and about hunting amongst the foliage. 
So let's go back to what I said earlier about Chulio Gralacris being perhaps the only bug in Australia I find genuinely a little nerve-wracking to work with. Surely they can't be more intimidating than Ethmostigmus rubripes, perhaps the country's ultimate creepy crawly predator and something that quite frankly would probably annihilate any raspy cricket in combat. But the thing with centipedes is that, fast and erratic as they can be, at least they're strictly ground-based. Plus a general familiarity with their mannerisms after years of keeping them has done a great deal to dampen their intimidation factor for me. Chorleo gralacris, however, is an entirely different matter. Orthopterans in general tend to not have the most predictable of movements. They can be chilling on your hand one moment and leaping onto your face the next. Combine that with a set of mandibles easily capable of drawing blood, as well as a strong inclination to nibble on unfamiliar surfaces, and you have an insect that could force a girly scream out of pretty much anyone. In spite of all this, however, these awe-inspiring predators pose no real danger to back up the intimidation factor. The worst they could inflict upon any human would be a somewhat painful cut. While they are certainly very formidable, raspy crickets don't have it all their own way, even among other invertebrates. Here a Grylacridid, not Chorleo Grylacris itself but a somewhat smaller species, has fallen prey to Holconia imanis, a very large huntsman widespread along Australia's eastern coast. And then of course there's giant centipedes which are simply on another level of overpowered. So I hope you appreciated this opportunity to learn about what is, in my opinion, one of the most underappreciated and overlooked insects in Australia. Though perhaps that lack of attention is a good thing. Given the media's track record with Australian animals, I'm sure Chorleo Grylacris would just provide more ammunition for clickbait channels. If you want to see the full suite of animals I encountered at Karanda, take a look at this playlist here. Or check out this old video of mine to behold one of the most unique orthopterans in the country. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed my content. Thank you all very much for watching, hopefully I'll be seeing you again very soon.